Mauri ore te whānau, no mai hoki mai. Welcome back to the practice run, your frontline pass to the heart of sports action. Brought to you by 99 Dreams, inspiring others to chase their dreams. With your host, Rāori, Tukoirangi, and sometimes the brother Vincent, we're bringing you the frontline pass to the world of the NRL and rugby league today, and who knows where the game will take us tomorrow. From the try line to the sideline, we've got you covered. So strap in as we tackle the big plays, the game-changing moments, and the stories that define legends. Whether you're a seasoned vet or this is your first hit up, the practice run is for everyone. Every run, every tackle, every win, experience the rush with us. With exclusive insights, couch analysis, and a touch of humour, the practice run is here to keep you entertained, informed, and part of our practice squad. Because here, every practice run takes us one step closer to glory. The Practice Squad, where every listener is MVP, powering our play every episode, every day. And lastly, we just want to give a huge mihi out to 99 Dreams for powering our passion. They sponsor every video, so big ups to 99 Dreams. You can go cop one of these portai. We are running low, so you better be in fast. We also have some baseball jerseys, so go check them out at 99dreams.co. Dot in Zenigo copy gears over there. We appreciate the support, Fano. Now let's kick things off with today's lineup. So today, Matt, we just appreciate everyone who's back on board with us. We know we took a break on Thursday. I had some Fano things to attend, so I appreciate um, you guys for sticking through us. We're back. We're better than ever. It was round my uh, a few upsets over the weekend. I mean, I was upset at what happened with my team. Uh, not happy, but uh, we'll get into that very shortly. Uh, otherwise, we've got to kick the show off today with uh, our team of the week. And then we're going to give like a, a mid-season update. This was Two's idea. So he thought, man, why don't we give a bit of a mid-season update? We'll have uh, a team of the comp so far. So like, a, what is it? quarter or a third it's our third our first trimester <laughs> our team of the trimester we'll call it that um, the trimester team uh we'll do our biggest surprise biggest left out and our current player of the comp so all of this we'll dive into after we get through our papers is rock then we'll go through our round nine review wrap things up with our power ranking and any other partner we, we have for the week. But Fano, you know what we do. We bounce to kick the show off with paper, scissors, rock. We do this every day, every day. You, know, you can't have a Tuesday or a Thursday without a bit of paper, scissors, rock. And for those who don't follow us, and this is your first time listening or watching, we go paper, scissors, rock every episode. We go one, two, three, shoot. Uh, we throw it off camera. It's kind of started out just to get our timing, but now it's just a thing. Uh, did I win the last? I'm, I'm on a hot streak, like a proper hot streak, eh? Yeah, yeah, you, you, you've been killing lately. You've been eating. Yeah. Not yes. happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Fano, we, we, hey, when it rains, it pours, and when, when the sun shines, we make hay. So let's get into it. So it's just regular papers. This is rock. One, two, three, shoot, pull up, and we'll see who wins. All right, let's get into it. All right, here we go, Cuzzy. Yeah. Three, two, one, shoot. That was terrible time. <laughs> that was hella laggy. Hand up. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, right, right, right. I wasn't confident with that. I just kind of threw it and was like, okay, we'll see what happens. All right, here I we heard go. like three, uh, two, your hand was one... down. I was like, what the? We'll figure it out. <laughs> Is it just that laggy today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll work through it. We'll work through yep. it. Okay, sweet as we go again. Three, two, one, shoot. And up, this is not the one I wanted. Ugh. Losing oh, streak but it's continues. the one I'll take. <laughs> oh, Lee. All right. Scissors cuts paper. I was actually going to throw rock, but my hand just went to scissors. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just thinking like... in my head rock, but my hand went scissors. I was just stuck in emotion. Eh? I was like, oh, fuck. Well, we're here. <laughs> uh, shout out to Paul I'll take that I'll take that Rest of love my cuz He gave me that win <laughs> Hey Well before we get into the show We'll have a bit of a catch up man How's the weekend What did you get up to What did you do Were you on it again No 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 We uh We took this weekend <laughs> Off drinking And it's very much needed 
Uh, we also shouldn't be drinking this weekend, I believe, coming up. But what's been happening, uh, bro? Finally back at Mahi, gotten over the uh, the old sickness and the cough. Still coughing every now and again, but it's not that bad. But uh, we got offered a job, a part-time job up at uh, BFT Tauranga, which is where I train. Thought I'd jump on the wagon. Yeah, so now uh, that's cracker. It's funny, as a So funny being on the other side of things. <laughs> Um, if you had told me a couple of years ago that I'd be a coach at a gym, I would just laughed in your face. I think we all would have, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> would come quite far. But nah, it's cool though. Um, yeah, so I had the first couple of sessions this week. It's been going all good. Keep at that. Yeah, so it makes it a little bit more busier, but it also gets us a little bit more prettier, I guess. And good experience. Eh? You think I should finally put that uh, PE degree of ours to good use? <laughs> So good <laughs> but uh it is what it is yeah um that's all for me bro how about you how you been yeah because it's it's been a um a weekend full of ups and downs you know uh losing losing a whanau member is always hard but uh it really brought us a lot closer to the the ones we have here so no nah, I'm, I'm thankful for that um so yeah, now we, we had a we had a bit of a bit of a big night on the Saturday night. I left my darts over at the cousin's place, so I, I, I needed to come drop those off ASAP. So if you're listening, my bro, bring my darts, <laughs> man. I need them back because shucks, there's a lot of money in those freaking in that um, dart case of mine. I, I calculated it the other day. I've got three sets of darts in there and all my parts, and it's I think I've dropped about seven hundred and forty five dollars on darts this year alone. Gee. So just. Just trying to find that right dart for me. So I think I've found the right dart for my throw. It's just dialing it in now. So, yeah, a little bit of a waste of money. But I guess that's what happens when you don't really have a dart shop here in Taranaki. So you kind of have to wing it and buy things online. So, yeah, that, that was my weekend. I'm looking forward to a fresh week this week. Um, getting my finances in order so I can get me a, a new motorcycle. That's, that's what we're, we're looking at doing. So, you know, we are... Uh, we are looking at some fun shit in the future. So I might do some uh, vlogs and things like that on the bikes on my personal channel. So uh, stay tuned for that, Farno. Uh, but yeah, that, that's about it, really. And I thought, well, let's get into Team of the Week, presented by, uh, let's give us, who, who's, a, who's a brand? Who's a brand? Uh, I'm looking around my room. I have no brands. Um who can we make up that will be our bullshit sponsor for the week? Just so we can, you know, advertise to try and uh, might attend Mega. <laughs> it's not actually, but we're, we're practicing. So when sponsors do decide to come on board, they'll be like, yeah, man, these guys know how to advertise things. So we've got the team of the week, the practice run team of the week presented by might attend Mega. Is this slogan still big as good? What well, might attend? Yeah, might attend mega. Is there what? What's their slogan? I don't know, to be honest. Do you uh, remember the, you the the ads they used to do? Here. The one with New Zealand's strongest man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dude, yeah, 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 yeah. Those ads would crack up. <laughs> um I think it's there's we're with you all the way. What kind of slogan is Mata that? Mata Mega, with you all the way. Uh, whether you're designing a house, building a fence, or just looking for a weekend project, Mata 10 is a store for you. It has all your store needs and um, Mata 10 Mega, big is good. <laughs> shout, shout out to Mata 10 for, for not sponsoring this segment. We appreciate um, the love we're not getting from you. <laughs> we're not actually good at this. But anyway, this is actually presented to you by 99 Dreams, empowering you to chase your dreams. Uh, I'll start off with the backs this weekend. You do the forwards, so I'll go uh, numbers 1 through to 6, and you do 7 through to 13. Mm-hmm. Sweet yep, as. All right. <clears throat> so, team of the week presented by 99 Dreams, empowering you to chase your dreams. And our team of the week looks like this this week. We have P 
Panthers fullback Dylan Edwards taking out the fullback spot on the wings. We've got another Panther. He plays on the Panthers, hey? I've just got the Tigers stuck on my head. <laughs> Sania <laughs> Taruva. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Jermaine Isako on the wings. It's because Taruva's going there next year, hey? Yeah. Uh, we've got Sebastian, Chris, and Dane Gagai taking out your centres and at 5-8. Someone I never thought would make our list ever because I was never a big fan of him. Um, Cody Nikorima. But hey, he is actually having a great season this year. So shout out Cody Nikorima. Here's your flowers, my man. And then to carry on the rest of the team at number seven, we have Jackson Hastings for his performance against the Waz. At eight, we have Hazelton, who has really impressed me this year. At nine, we have uh, the mighty Reed Mahone, who likes to piss off all the big dogs, but you don't want it. <laughs> at number 10, we have Tyrell May. At 11, we have Kicker, who's just smoking everybody. At 12, probably one of the more in forwards, sec- um, form second rowers. In Angus Crichton, and at number 13, making his debut. You would think it was Paddy Carrigan. We do have to say honourable mention to him because he could easily made this team, but we've gone with someone else. Can you believe a Fano for the first time? It's not Paddy <laughs> Carrigan at 13. It is instead Ruben Cotter, and that is your 99 Dreams Team of the Week. A a a shout out to Rupert Cotter, man. Paddy Carrigan was on a what nine week run almost. Nah, uh, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven week run. He was on a seven week run at number one, man. He was the guy to knock off the mountain. Like you said, he could have easily um, maintained his spot there, but look, I thought Rupert Cotter had an amazing game over the weekend, uh, and he definitely deserved to be rewarded for that. Um, being put on a team of the week that he doesn't even know exists. But there you go, <laughs> Ruben Cotter. <laughs> now I thought I thought maybe we'll save the surprises and and to be to be to be for after we do our trimester team team of the trimester. Um, we should get through that first, just because we, we've already established our team of the week. And, you know, there, there's been quite a few names popping up every week. You've you got names like William Kikau, Patrick Carrigan, um, Jerome Hughes, uh, Joey Manu are names that pop up often. So some of the guys on this list may not always pop up on our team of the week. It's because they're that second guy or that third guy. Or they're there or thereabouts, but not quite that big time player yet. But they will be on this list. Uh, how do you how do you want to do this, bro? You want to go first? Or you want me to go first? It's your idea. I can go first. I don't mind. Um, I'll just throw it off the whole team. Yeah, easy enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of just just explain a little yeah. bit why you picked them and. Yeah. Uh, why you think they, they deserve that, that number one spot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was just the idea came from, you know, it's week nine, done and dusted, and we're a third of the way through, so might as well take, like, a, I guess, a snapshot of the season as is, how it's been, and kind of where we think it's going. And I guess to get some, you know, give people flowers who probably do deserve it but don't quite get recognised. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where the idea came from. And this is... Pretty much how you interpret it, team of the year. You know, you could go off what you want, form right now, or, you know, if someone's been playing better than you think. It, it, there wasn't really a, a criteria to it. It was just who do you think's been the team of the year so far up until this point, and pretty much go from there. So that's enough of that. At fullback, I have who I think is the best fullback in the world. Uh, honourable mention goes to Reese Welsh, but uh, I had to go with none other than Dylan Edwards. He is just a freak. My wingers, I mean, on one wing, he's been probably the hottest winger in the comp. Uh, Mister wants to play in the centres, but kills it at wing. We've got one with none other than Zach Lomax. <laughs> and, you know, when a winger's leading your Dali M at one point, you know, that shows his class. He has paired up with Brian To'o, who I firmly believe is the best winger in the game. Honourable mention goes to Mulitalo from the Sharks and Jermaine Asako. Those two have been killing it as well. I just think Toto's consistency is just on another level. 
at centers with the number four. It's always, it was always going to be the superstar Joey Manu. He is just a freak of nature. And once again, I'm absolutely gutted that he's leaving the NRL at the end of the year. I partnered him up, partnered him up with Tomoko. Um, just again, just solid in his performance. He just goes hard, has his moments. Honorable mention goes to Cobo. Cobo was there, thereabouts for me. Uh, but he was the one that missed out. And in the halves at number six, I've gone with my boy, Matty Burden. I feel as though he's starting to find consistency and he's been really, really good. Uh, Cameron Munster was no, not even close to making this list. And honorable mention goes to Ezra Mann. I feel he's been um, really consistent for you guys. And yeah, for me, it was between those two and I went with my boy. Number seven, Jerome Hughes. I think he's been the best Storm player all year. Everything that seems to happen good for that team is around him. He feels as though he's taken it to another level this year. And so he fully deserves that spot. My props, I've gone with Adam Fanua Blake and Terrell May. Fanua Blake just has a tendency to score tries with ease. And he's always, you know, I feel as though he gives the Warriors a chance every game. Terrell May, he's kind of like a surprise person for me. I didn't expect him to be this good this year. And he's absolutely taken it to another level. His minutes are a bit sporadic all over the place. Sometimes he starts, sometimes he comes off the bench. Sometimes he gets you 100 points in super coach. Sometimes he gets you like 10 points. You just never know. But every time I've watched the Roosters play, he is one player that has stood out for me. So I've given him the nod there. Number nine, Harry Grant. He's just class. Not really much more to say uh, to that. Honourable mention goes to Wade, uh, Wade Egan. If he wasn't as injured as much, probably would have been him because he's really, really surprised me. And I feel as though he's now an elite Hooker, also got to mention the man who's always by himself, or not so by himself anymore, Api Korosau. The second rowers, Viliami Kikau. I think he's returned the mantle as the best second rower. Later, David Fafida and uh, Ola Kuatu. Although Ola Kuatu gets a special mention, I went with Angus Crichton. I know he didn't start the season with the team, pretty much on his way out, but he has just turned it up. I feel as though the four or five games that he's played, he's really caught my eye and he's just been dominant and if the Roosters don't sign him, someone else will be silly not to. And yeah, number 13, this was the, probably the easiest decision along with Dylan Edwards. Paddy yeah, Carrigan, yeah. he's been our player of the week every week pretty much. Um, I don't know because <laughs> Payne Haas went down that he just went to another level, but honestly he has just been all class and one of the best forwards in the game, if not the best forward currently. So, yeah, man, that is my team of the first third of the year. Will it be the same in another nine weeks? I don't know. But right now, that's who I'm rolling with, man. And that's who I'm going with. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there and then hand it over to you. Let us know what your team looks like. All right, all right, all right. So, my... Uh... My practice run uh, team of the trimester looks like the same as you, man. I got Dylan Edwards at fullback. Uh, he's not as electrifying as Reese Walsh, but he he's he's there, man. He's super fit. He he's just he's a nuisance. He's everywhere you need him to be. He makes those plays. He makes those try saving tackles. Um, he you know he pounces on those loose balls. He follows that kick chase. He's everything you want and a fullback and more. Uh, on the wing, yeah, I've got that Zach Lomax wannabe centre um, on the wing. Killing it, man. And I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to Parramatta and stays on the wing, to be honest. On the other wing, I've gone with Ronaldo Molitalo. Um, you know, I just he's an undeniable form at the moment, and those Sharks are rolling, and he is a part of the reason why. They are the number one team on the ladder. I'm assuming they're the number one team. I don't actually look at the ladder each week. I just look at our power ranking and just think, oh, fuck, they'll be there or thereabouts. <laughs> um, in the centres, I've gone with, yeah, the, the reliable Joey Manu. And, I mean, if he was playing fullback, he'd probably be out and out number one fullback too. Um, and at number three, I've gone with Katoni Staggs, right? Now, I've gone this route because of his defensive efforts at the Broncos. Um you know, more often than not, he's forced to make the um, 
the matchups against some of the tougher centers in the comp. I remember that Panthers game <clears throat> when um, Reese Walsh got knocked out and that forced Cobbo to full back and it put um, Brennan Piakuta into center. So he was getting torched, I think, by Tango in the first. Um, and then in the second half, they switched um, Stags. So Stags had shut down May on in the centers. And then in the second half, they switched him. And then he shut down Tango. And then they went and attacked Jordan Ricky and exposed Jordan Ricky. And that's how we lost that game. Um, so, yeah, more often than not, man, Katoni's always there to just stand up defensively. And, yeah, he, he's always putting his hand up to do mahi to try and get the boys going um, on offense. But, yeah, his, his strike rate isn't as, as flashy as Selwyn's. Um, but, man, his defense, I think, is what keeps him in there. I also had... Um, Jesse Ramian on the outskirts um, mm. for this team as well. He, he's been playing phenomenally lately. I've really enjoyed watching um, Jesse Ramian play. So, yeah, for me, it was going to be one of those guys jumping in that spot there. Uh, my halves look a little bit different. <clears throat> uh, I've got Tom Dearden at the six. I think he's been playing phenomenally this season. Yeah, the Cowboys have been up and down, but it hasn't been at the fault of Tom Dead. And they've been unfortunate, actually, to cop a few injuries throughout the year as well. So I think that's what's sort of holding that team back from their full potential. And, and you know, the shuffling around of Tom Lolo, how they manage that, just, yeah, just, just seems like a lot of uncertainty. But um, Tom Dead, he's definitely put his hand up and said, you know, look at me. I'm the captain. Oh, let me do some money. <laughs> uh, at seven, man, yeah, we got we got the electrifying J- Jamal Hughes. Man, he just he stepped it up a notch this season. I feel like, like in the absence of Munster, Hughes has been that guy. Um, and yeah, if Hines wasn't picking up so many ghost points, nah, to be honest, Hines deserves some of his points that he's got at the moment. But yeah, look, Hughes, man, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I hope he carries that form over for the Kiwis and continues to play this way. I'm loving it, brother. Uh, yeah, at eight, we've got Adam Fendua Blake. Just he's he's a man alone over there um, in Auckland at the moment. <laughs> he's doing the best he can this season to get the Warriors to that grand final. Um, and if they do make it there, it'll probably be because of Adam Fedor Blake. Um, he's doing, yeah, he's doing all he can for those fans out there in Auckland. So you fellas, man, turn up. Um, at Hooker, yeah, there, there's not too many options outside of Harry Grant. I had Reese Robson as well as Wade Egan on, on there. Mm. Again, um, restarted the comp off, you know, on a great he had a mean run there at the start of the season. Um, and I, I guess it's just like, you know, if you're not winning games, it's hard to sort of pick you to be that guy on the team. Um, and that's why Wade Egan didn't get the nod because, you know, Warriors are losing games they should be winning. And, you know, Harry Grant's been a part of a team that just can grind out any kind of game. It looks like they'll probably lose and, you know, they start making plays, string plays together. You know, his little darts out of dummy catches you off guard he makes some extra meters or at, at the very like best i guess uh gets a penalty because someone offside is tackling him trying to make a make a play uh then i've gone with joey tarpenny you know on that raiders side that's in a bit of a slump i feel like tarpenny has just been a solid go forward option for them uh every time he's out on that field he's just doing his best he's putting in the mahi and um yeah, he, he's really stepped up this season, I think, uh, over there in Canberra. Um, yeah, Viliami Kikau. He's, he's as certain as Dylan Edwards. This is, uh, I'm at a loss for words of how to describe why he should be on the team. There's, there's very little reasons why he shouldn't be on the team. And this season is just proving, like, I feel like he is definitely... Maybe like 65% of the reason the Bulldogs are able to stay in the fight a lot of the time. Um, just his presence on kick chase, uh, it, it must get into the heads of uh, you know those centers and those wings and those fullbacks. And they're catching that ball and you just look up and you see Kakao coming full pace. Like, man, I'm dropping that. I'm dropping my sack. I'd rather defend the line. I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll, 
we on the tin needle over here. We just dee up a little bit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not letting them smoke me. So yeah, William Kukal, it's great to see him actually uh, back in some form and be able to give Bulldogs fans the money that they deserve to see him play at. Um, and then yeah, Angus Crichton in, in some form. I couldn't really pinpoint another second rower that has been doing more. Uh, I tried. I, I, I sat here for a little while going, uh, nah, nah, not them either. <laughs> nah, not them. And I didn't want to go to Crichton because he hasn't played the full season. Um, I was giving, you know, everyone equal opportunities to, to showcase their talent. And I thought, yeah, well, Crichton's probably the, the best option out here. And yeah, like you said, number 13 has to be, Patrick Carrigan, there's no other option. Like, yes, Isaiah Yo is all goods, but uh, they lost to Manly, you know? And that was like a full strength team ish. So, come on, man. Isaiah, no. Uh, it's Patrick Carrigan who just really stepped up in the absence of a lot of our players, to be honest. Broncos are just having the meanest season. We're having the best season I've ever seen them have. Fuck it now. Stupid injuries, but yes, that's my team of the trimester one through to 13. Um, there, you know, so many great players, and I'm not too sure whether or not that will stay the same. I think Paddy Carrigan will probably fall down the ranks a little bit now with the return of Haas. Um, there'd just be different assignments for him that he, he'll he won't have to play that role as much, I think. Um, should we head over to your Biggest leap down. We'll start with the biggest leap down and then we'll go bigger surprise and then we'll round out with player of the comp. Or player of the trimester. Yep, so my biggest leap down and probably not a surprise to anyone. It's just Souths. It's just all bad. No good. I can't even think of <laughs> one good thing. It's just been all downhill. Um, I think I had them in my eight quite comfortably. You had Jack Wyden coming over. Their team on paper is so good, but oh, how it's gone so wrong. And it costs, you know, Demetrius or Demet whatever his name is, his uh, job, rightfully <laughs> so. You know, he had to go. It's just the way it was, or just the way it is. And yeah, just I don't think I expected this. I don't think anyone expected this. And that they're, they're paying the price for it. Their team, it's just a. I don't know what's going on. Bad vibes, bad juju, whatever it is, you got to change it. But Souths, man, I don't think anyone saw this, and it's just all sorts of bad. Honorable mention goes to the Waz. Ah, it's another team. That, <laughs> you know, I had high hopes. Yeah, so I was tossing up between the Waz yeah. and Souths. I ended up going with the Rabbitohs because you're at the bottom of the table, and honestly, you look like the worst team in the comp by a mile. So yeah, had to go with him in the end. You know, what, you know, it's always going to be funny though, G. The the funniest thing to me about that is that you lost to the to the bunnies. I know. <laughs> in the game, we should have won. That, that's that's what makes it worse. Yeah, that's probably your biggest letdown of the season, I think. <laughs> oh. yeah. Losing to the bunnies. <laughs> My biggest letdown for this season. Um, Funnily enough, isn't the bunnies? I thought I'd go. I, I I interpreted this question a little differently. My biggest letdown is the Roosters letting Joey Manu go to Rugby Union. Mm. That's my biggest letdown this season. You're letting a quality player leave the sport because you couldn't re-sign him. At that time, you couldn't afford it. And now look, you're letting one of the best players go because you trust in Teddy. Well, I trust in Joey Manu, and I bet Teddy probably be right next to Kerry at the end of the season, retiring. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's funny. But yeah, look, I don't know if that's my biggest letdown or my biggest pissed off moment. But you know, Kiwis are losing a real one in Joey Manu, um, and um, who is it? Honda or Kawasaki? One of those motorcycle brands are getting a. Um, Joey Manu at the rugby club next season and go well Joey go well we will miss you we will miss you 
Heading over to our biggest surprise, uh, what was your biggest surprise this season, bro? Well, it probably comes as a surprise to know what I picked. Of course, I picked my team, the Bulldogs. The fact that we're in the top nine, <laughs> just the, or the top eight. This is, um, a state came up. This is, like, what is it? The furthest into a season we have been in the top eight. Um, fully proud of the boys. I feel as our club's on a ride. It feels like we've turned the page, which is what I'm most happy about. And, you know, I've been talking about it, harping on about it for the last how long now? Ten weeks it feels about our lack of forwards and all of our utilities. But honestly, I think that's what's got us going. Our line speed, I think, is the best in the game. Defensive line, especially when they're coming out of yardage. <coughs> in the last three weeks, we've been able to pin teams. We're coming up on tackle four or five, and they're just getting out of their 30, 40. So they're having a kick, and it's getting us on the front forward, and it's led by our... Our hooker, Reed, and all of our small little nuggety bench forwards who are just, you know, what we lack in size, we make up for in speed. And it's showing because we're getting off the line real quick. And I think we're surprising a lot of people. And forwards who you would think would dominate us have had subpar games just because we've been pinning everyone down. Um, yeah, look, I think we've still got a long way to go, but. I can actually see it, and I think all of us Bulldogs fans can see it. Uh, happy of where we're going. Hopefully we can keep it up. We've got winnable games coming up from what I've seen on the draw. And not saying that we're going to make the top eight. I still think that's a little bit above us. But I don't think we're the worst team in the comp, and honestly, I think we're better than you know, three or four teams at the bottom there, and I think we have uh, moved up a tier. We're no longer trash. We're, uh, what's one level above trash? Below average, I'd say. <laughs> so there's like, there's trash. <laughs> Below average, average, above average, and then you've got like the Penrith. So yeah, I don't think we're trash anymore. Still a little bit below average, but we're looking good. We're trending in the right direction, that's all I know. And I had us fighting for the wooden spoon. I was hoping the Dragons would win it. But they have also surprised me. Um, so I don't want to mention to them. But yeah. <laughs> this is not where I thought it would be. And I'm super happy about it. And yes. Let's go boys. What about you bro? What's your surprise? I'd like I'd like to add in another tier though. I'd like to add in another tier. <laughs> yeah, I like to go yeah. trash. Um, what, what was your other tier? But I, I want to add an unlucky or unfortunate because that's where we're fucking sitting. Unfortunate <laughs> with all our injuries. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, we're not, we're not for... top tier. We're not good. We're not average. We're unfortunate. That's <laughs> all we are. <laughs> Told you, bro. That pain of curse is real. Uh... Hey, man. We talked about it at the start of the year, bro. It's like <laughs> the Madden curse. It's the Penrith curse. Yep. Yep. Fuck me. Um, look, my biggest surprise uh, that really caught me off guard was James Fisher-Harris coming home mm. to play for the Warriors in 2025. That, that news was the biggest shock to me. Um, did not see it coming. Um, but yeah, I, I, a welcome surprise, I think, because it just goes to show that maybe the Warriors aren't, you know, uh, where you send players that don't crack any game time. And hopefully for some of our other Kiwi boys, they decide to come home as well and, you know, give back to some of the kids that idolise them uh, in the same way that they grew up idolising other um, great warriors like Stacey Jones, Ruben Wiki, uh, Monty Beetham and the like. So I think that's a, a wicked move um, for both Adam, uh, not Adam, sorry, um, for James Fisher-Harris to come home, be closer to Farno, but also for... Uh, the Warriors in attracting uh, bigger overseas talent. Hopefully they take no more Broncos players, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep raiding the Panthers. Raid the Roosters while you're at it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that was my biggest surprise, I think. Um, yeah. That and us getting injured like every game. I think on <laughs> average, we get two players injured every week, whether it be at training <coughs> or in a game. It's on average two players. And I said in the group chat, Kevy, you need to have a fucking back 
in the bench. <laughs> if we had a Thursday show, I guarantee that's what I would have said when we read out those team lists. I would have been blasting heavy for that. And look what happens. We paid the price. I even told my auntie she's playing the um, NRL pickums. Like you predict each game. I told her, oh, look, yeah. we don't have any cover on the bench. If one of our backs get injured, we're losing this game because our rotations are shit. We've got backs, uh, not backs, sorry, forwards and smoothie. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> and sure enough, we had sin bins. We had two injuries. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's a bit of a shambles this season. But, um. Moving along to your player of the comp, who's who's been your standout go to guy so far this season? Um yeah, I kind of cheated. I really couldn't split them, so I just ended up with going with co co players so my two players that I feel are just uh, head and shoulders above everyone else and have been for the first nine weeks by going with uh none other than Dylan Edwards and Patty Carrigan. I think they are just Nice. On another level, Kerrigan. Yeah, honestly, he, it's nick and nick with him and Isaiah Yo, and I might have to go with him ahead of Yo at the moment for that lock position. And Dylan Edwards, oh, yeah. he is just Mister Consistency, Mister Do It All, Fix It All, and his ball playing and his ability to make sunk out of nothing, get them out of trouble. I mean, Cleary's been out for how many weeks now? I mean, he held the fort down for, for them, even in those few losses. He was leading the way. And I just don't know how he's not the fullback for New South Wales. I just I just don't. I'm pretty sure he's going to get picked. And I know Teddy's there, but fuck, you got to pull the pin eventually. And the man's just on. So I just say, why not do it now? Why not? Yeah. What's the worst that can happen? You just lose? Well, you've been losing anyway. So it. fuck me days. <laughs> yeah. So it's my two. I know it's a bit of a cop-out. I know it's a bit of a cop-out, but I couldn't split them. So I had to, I had to give it give it to both of them, man. They're just different. Well, unlike you, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I hate the Panthers. I hate the Roosters. There's just two teams that I really don't like, you know. I'm never going to give them love. <laughs> Fuck Tedesco. <coughs> he shouldn't be He shouldn't be the captain of New South Wales. He shouldn't even be near the club. If he gets selected mm. this season, Queensland, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm trading out everything blue. And we're repping Maroon. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know who's going to be wearing it? Sal and Cobbo, Reese Walsh, and the player of the trimester, Captain Patrick Carrigan. Look, like you said, he's phenomenal, man. In the absence of Reynolds, Walsh, Haas, um, shit, even the other week we had no Mam and Cobbo, you know, Losing players like that, you'd think Broncos are going to go on a massive losing streak. I mean, look what happened to the Raiders and the Eels. They lost a few key players, and they, they went to the shit. They really struggled to perform. But somehow, the Broncos have managed to scrape by and pick up a couple of wins here and there. So that's something um, we need to be super proud of. And, you know, that was led by none other than Patrick Carrigan, as well as our bench, our youth coming through. They've really stepped up in that time, but, man, the mahi that Paddy Carrigan was putting in over those past few weeks in the absence of Payne Haas and the absence of Brennan Piakuda, um, no Walsh for a bit there, no Reynolds. Um, you know, he just picks up that ball and just moves forward, you know. Uh, when life gets tough, you just move forward and Patrick Carrigan is, is a prime example of, of a forward uh, who's leading the way. I'm, I'm surprised he's not actually further up in the Delhi M. Um, I believe he should be. He, he's, you know, one of the hardest workers out there at the moment. Definitely would be the best 13 in the comp. Um, and, yeah, if Tedesco gets picked for New South Wales, I wouldn't be too mad in picking up that Maroon. Even if Queensland then go on like an eight-year losing streak because I've become a fan because I feel like it's just my luck. <laughs> They'll just start losing. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's... That's our, uh, what, what are we calling this segment? The Trimester Chicken? 
Yep, there you go. We'll call try it the Mr. Chicken. Chicken. All we right. Are. So those are this is our segment, the Try Mr. Chicken, brought to you by McDonald's. Ba da 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 da, I'm loving it. It's not actually brought to you by McDonald's, but you know, we're just trying to, um, we're just trying to trying to get some sponsorship, man. BK, have it your way. KFC, I don't know what KFC say, but Kentucky Fried yeah. Chicken. Oh yeah. Finger licking is it? Uh, <laughs> is it? I don't know, man. No, I'm not going to say that. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> round and review. Let's go to the NRL round and review. Man, how did last week go, man? It was, it was, it was crazy. There was some upsets. It looked like, you know, this week was just one of those fuck you weeks. Because I started off with Thursday night at Acor Stadium in Sydney. The Rabbitohs. Took on the Panthers and lost twelve to forty two. Now this is one of those games where the fuck you kind of looks like it. Like when the rugby league gods aren't on your side, they really ain't on your side because the Bunnies they looked promising. They put twelve points on the board. It was you know things were looking promising there for the Bunnies fans. And then seven unanswered tries happened. <laughs> <laughs> How do you lose seven unanswered? tries go down like what the fuck i don't know what it is i don't know what it is but um yeah what 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 a sad way to end your coaching career there in uh south sydney um but hey shit happens gotta move on i'm not too sure where the bunnies go from here because the panthers just humiliated them and really the panthers are solidifying themselves as another premiership team um, you can start warming the fat lady up because uh, it's about to be over if they keep barnstorming through teams like <laughs> this. However, it is the Bunnies, um, and almost every team should beat the Bunnies this season. Um, I'm not too sure when they'll pick up their next win because uh, a lot of teams now are finding some form. They're all finding their feet. Um, I think the Bunnies were lucky to get that win against the Bulldogs earlier this season because the Bulldogs were still finding their feet a little bit. Um, but yeah, now nine games in and they're still struggling like this. Yeah, I don't know what to sort of put my finger on really when it comes to this. Um, Dylan Edwards was a beast with that ball. Did he miss at all? Did he go six nah, from six? Bro. Seven from seven, bro does not miss. Nah, Schneider was the last kick. Oh. Well yeah. Six from six. Bro does not miss. Yeah, nah. He is he is wicked. And when when's Clary due back? I think from what I heard, Cleary could have played that game, but because it was a short turnaround, they decided to rest him. Like if it had been not the Thursday game, yeah. Like if it was maybe a Sunday game, he probably plays, but just short turnaround, no need to risk it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, long mm. season. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that's love a lot this of game. this game really. Look, Rabbitohs, like you said, bro, Rabbitohs started off the game good and then it just went went south. And if we want to look at the moment, it's, uh, was it Jai Arrow Simbin? I think, because mm. Rabbitohs scored the first two tries, right, when um, Tango got Simbin for the hip drop tackle. Yeah, that was it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. He got Simbin for the hip drop and then... Cody Walker, just did Cody Walker things, pretty much set up their two tries easy. They had momentum. I think it was a penalty they gave the momentum back to Penrith. They had like two, what do they call um count resets or tackle resets on defending their line. And then it was like a penalty and then another penalty. So the ref gave them the final warning. Hey, look, too many infringements down here. We've had two or three 
resets in a row and a couple penalties in a row. Next one's going to the bin. 30 seconds later, I think they got called for holding. Can't reset. Ref's like, yep, that's enough. Jai arrow gone to the bin. And it's hard enough to defend Penrith when you got 13. It's pretty much near impossible when you were down a man. And it's pretty much what happened. Jai arrow Simbin, 17th minute. Taruva, try, 17th minute. And they scored again, 21 minutes. Snowball effect. Once they got the momentum, they just never gave it up, man. South were out of that game. And South also had some injuries. Dean Hawkins had to leave the field. He didn't finish the game. He did the kickoff and then done. He a uh, hip flex or something, but it was instant. Eh? Like he kicked it and couldn't even move. He just went down in pain. I think he's getting scans, but he's going to be out multiple weeks. Um, Jai Gray, the fullback, I think he's out for a few weeks, like three or four weeks. And then you have Cam Murray. He's out. He's missing State of O game one. He's out for like six or eight games. Yeah. So they are missing players that are in key positions. I think they're struggling to even name a team, eh? Yeah, that's not going to help their campaign at all. <laughs> no, it definitely isn't. If anything, it solidifies that's probably going to be their one and spoon because um, they need Cam Murray. Be interesting to see what they do now. Surely Whiten has to go to six. You've got to put Walker at seven. I know they're both left side players, but you just need them there. Uh, unless you have Latrell go to six or him you know, playing the halves. The way he plays, he pretty much plays like a half. He doesn't really like running the ball. Um, or he does when he has to, but yeah. <laughs> but I don't know, man. I don't even know who you go put to a fullback anymore because you had Latrell, who probably needs to be shifted into the halves, and then you got Gray, who's just so little, man. He's so tiny. He's good, but he's just so, so tiny for me. <laughs> Um, maybe they could look to the market, see if they can sign someone, but I don't see it getting any better. Season's a wrap, and Penrith are just too good, too clinical. That machine just keeps turning, and they get victory after victory. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for this game. Dominant victory for the Penrith. Uh, Demetrio had to go, and boy, I don't think we'll be waiting too long until they confirm that uh, Bennett's going to be the coach, right? Story for another time, maybe, but uh, um, well, there's rumblings, yeah, there's rumblings they want him to sign earlier, they they are trying to get him this season. True, I don't see the dolphins doing that, I don't see the dolphins letting them go. Nah, nah, they're, they're rolling at the moment. The dolphins they've got a bit of momentum underneath, uh, Wayne, so yep. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, that's that's that game. Um, when it rains, it pours bunnies, fans, and it's not going to get any easier. But still, sharp to the game. I think you guys had the worst record in attendance this uh, season so far. So come on, bunnies fans, get behind your boys. They need all the love and support they can get right now because times be tough. Over to the Friday night, um, our warm-up was Manly Sea Eagles at home at Four Pines Park Stadium taking on the Canberra Raiders. Now, look, I had this one all but done undusted by Manly. I thought, you know, coming into this game, I thought, Manly, surely, Raiders have been getting pumped lately. they got nobody. they got no life. However, I was wrong. I apologise, Raiders fans. Um, you guys were on, man. Kyle Weeks, he had a game. Um, it looked to be all one-way traffic in the first half. Um, what was it? Three, four tries to one um, from Manly in the first half. What was the halftime score? Yeah, 20 to six. Um, I was watching that down at the pub and yeah, I was like, damn. All right, Manly, relax. And then all of a sudden, Ricky must have lit a firework underneath all these boys because, damn, they showed up in that second half. And I was all for it because, to be honest, I wasn't really supporting either team either way. But I love a comeback. 
And so I was like, all right, let's go, let's go. They, they scored in the 52nd minute through Elliot Whitehead. And then again, he scores in the 57th minute. And I'm like, oh, oh, we've got a game on. Come on now. Come on now. Uh, and then Kotrick gets over and then Young gets over. And now it's 26-24. Um, if Ruben had made all his kicks, or at least one more kick, it would have been a draw game and gone to Golden Point. And there was minutes where it almost went, man. And, oh, I was happy for Raiders fans because that was a big-time win for them, I think. It really showed a lot of the heart and grit, determination um, over there in Canberra. Like, yeah, times are tough. They've lost a lot of players this season. They, they, um, but they lost uh, Fogarty. Um and like we said, you know, they've got an experienced uh, spine of, what, 24 games or something like that. And it's very minimal. So for the Raiders to get a win over the Manly Seagulls, who, again, have been beating quality teams lately, well done. Well done. And I'm still perplexed. I don't know where either of the two teams sit yet. Because, you know, Manly, that they got the draw against the Warriors. They lost to the Dragons. Um, the Raiders got pumped by the Sharks. But they got a win over Seals. It, it, it's, it's very confusing. I'm not too sure who's what and where. But um, good on you, Man- Manly, for trying. But uh, how does it go? <laughs> skull. 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 <laughs> Let's go Raiders. Um, yeah, look, great game. I quite enjoyed that game, actually. Um, it, it was quite entertaining from start to finish. And uh, Tommy, that's who I was supposed to talk about in this. Tommy Talol, scoring tries in the past few <laughs> weeks, man. I see you. I see you, my guy. It's another winger that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, a fan of this season. I'm loving the backs this year. I've got no love for the forwards, actually. Eh? I don't really hype up too many forwards outside of Kerrigan. Eh? You, you always hear me talk about, like, Lomax, Sloan. Now we've got Tommy Talol. I can't call him Tommy T, but I want to. But that's what they call Tom Trevojevic. So, mm. man, but Tommy T, that's just a gangster name. I feel like Tommy T sells weed in the weekends. <laughs> like when he ain't playing footy, he's just slanging on the corner. That's Tommy T. Mm. Yeah, but uh, shout out Tommy Talol. Uh, big fan, big fan. He might be the reason why I, um, I fly the manly flag one day. But hey, shout out to the Raiders. Um, you guys are doing mean in the green machine. Let's go. Over to you, bro. Yeah, look, that game was, I don't even know what to call it. Eh? Honestly, it felt like it was over after like 30 minutes or whatever when they were up like 20 nil. And then it looks like manly just stopped playing. And then the Raiders came through. Yeah. Ricky Stewart, they must have given, like you said, one hell of a halftime speech. But I have to give to the uh, props to the bro. Um, oh, Elliot Whitehead. Bro. Like, he played out of his skin. He was the one that made that mistake that let um, Tommy Talal get that try. Like, that was off his mistake, I'm pretty sure. He's the one that fumbled the ball, though that pass should never been given. And then he gets himself a double. Yeah. And uh, one of them, was, or the second one, was a bit of luck as well. But look, sometimes you create your own luck and they got the job done. Yeah, it just, I mean, it pretty much ended anyone's multi. If you had a multi for the weekend, no way you had the Raiders <laughs> winning. I never think a diehard Raiders fan had you winning. Nah. Uh, and then you go and pull that <laughs> out, out of nowhere. Manly Sea Eagles up to, like I keep saying, man, when it's a game that you should win, you need a win. I think this competition is going to be closer than what a lot of people think. I mean, looking at the ladder, there's like five teams, I think, that are outside the eight by one game. That's how close it is. You need to win these games. But yeah, Elliot Whitehead played out of his skin. Nick Kotrick, former Bulldog. I wouldn't even call him a bulldog. He was there for for one year. I don't even know why we signed him. It wasn't a great signing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, look, gets the call up for my New South Wales Cup and put their performance on. But, you know, sometimes you got to find ways to win, and they got it done. Ruben Garrick, make your kicks, brother. Game would have been over. Uh, <laughs> but, look, credit where credit's due. You know, good one for the Raiders. Might be able to turn this season around because I thought it was over. 
after Fogarty went down. Maybe it's not, but also Sea Eagles. I can't get a reading on you. You beat teams that you should lose to, and then you lose the teams you should beat. Like, all we ask for is consistency. But, um, well, <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah. in a way they've given it to us, right? They are probably one of the most incon- uh, consistently inconsistent teams. So maybe that's just how we have to look at them. They're going to beat teams that they're going to lose. We think we're going to lose to. Then they're going to lose to the teams that we think they should absolutely smoke. But, uh, yeah, I'll leave it out there. Congrats to uh, Ricky Stewart and his boys. And uh, Seabold, fucking sort your shit out. Up to. <laughs> well, hey, talking about sort your shit out. Friday night, main event, Brisbane Broncos taking on the Sydney Roosters. Now, I've said this throughout the show already, but for fuck's sake, Kevy, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Like, I'm passionate about this team, and I'm passionate about these selections. Let me run you by the bench, okay? This is our interchange. We've got Tyson Smoothie, a hooker. Xavier Willison, he's like a second rower prop. Kobe Hetherington, same thing. Fletcher Baker, prop, right? Where the fuck's our injury cover? I don't care what other teams are doing. I don't care if other teams are bringing three forwards and one utility. I don't give a shit. Out of every game we've played this season, we've lost two players. We lose up to three per week because of training. They get injured at training, so he's struggling to stay healthy. And this game was a prime example of that. So we lose uh, Jesse Arthurs. I think he fractured his jaw. So he was gone. That meant Colbo to the wing, um, Ricky to centres, um, and Katoni went to the other centre to replace where Colbo was. Um, and then I think Dean gets sent off. I think Dean um, has that shoulder. Shoulder charge connected to the head, which. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why didn't he go off for HIA? And yet, a few plays later, Mam has a slight head knock, and then all of a sudden, Independent Doctor reckons, oh, we need Mam come off the field for HIA, which left us stranded because at that point, we had lost Adam Reynolds with his tall pectoral. Um, so he'd done. And that meant Tyson Smoothie now permanently at 14. And then we had um, Billy Walters coming on off the bench again because he was having a rest at this point to cover the injured Reynolds and then Mam comes off so I think they shifted Reese Walsh from fullback into the halves momentarily while I think Xavier Willison went to centre uh, on the other side and then that put um, Stags at fullback for a little bit which makes no sense so <laughs> Kevy, moving forward we're going to have a back as injury cover. We're going to figure out how to get those forwards fitter so they can fucking play the full 80 if they have to. Because we ain't carrying no more three forwards on the bench. That ain't how this team going to work. Now how this team going to be moving forward. I ain't giving the Roosters no props. We should have stayed in that game. We gave up too many errors and we just looked lacklustre in all honesty. We looked like we didn't want it after we got that first try. And then the Roosters just kept on coming. But anyway, back to my Broncos. Uh, now that Jesse's done, Oates to the bench. I want to see Jordan Pereira get some game time. I want to see what he can do. The reason I say Oates to the bench is because he can cover in the forwards as well. If you know, you got lazy forwards um, that aren't fit enough to play the full 80. But um, yeah, I think moving forward, we need to put him on the bench. Um, I'm assuming because we've got no um, Jock Madden, he's still out. I'm assuming it's going to be Mam and Billy uh, in the halves with Smoothie taking on the starting hooking position. And we all want to see um, Blake Moser come on, right? We all want to see it. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you come Thursday when the next episode drops or how come later on tonight when we look at the team list, it's going to be Corey Pakes. I guarantee it's Corey on the bench. You can almost bet. That, that, that's more of a sure thing than it being fucking 
Christmas on the 25th of December. I guarantee it'll be Corey Pakes just because he's been there before. Kevin knows how he plays, so he'll pick someone that he thinks is reliable like that. Also think uh, Xavier Willison should start over Corey Jensen. Um, and maybe drop... Well, no, nah, because we'll be having... Um... So never mind. Yeah, Fletcher Baker's got to get dropped for uh, Corey Oates on the bench. But yeah, uh, the Roosters and their god-awful um, minutes. I don't know how Robbo's working out who's playing how many minutes each week because it changes every week. <laughs> but good on Cyril May for making the most of his minutes. Um, he just put the team on his back and did, did bits. Connor Watson was also doing bits out there this week, yeah. man. He, he looked great. Um Yeah, there's not much else I want to say about this team, really, <laughs> other than I'm just disappointed. I knew I knew the minute we didn't have a freaking back in the reserves, that uh, on the bench, sorry, that we were going to have an injury to one of our uh, outside backs. And yeah, sure enough, that's what happens, right? What is that? Murphy's Law, eh? Yeah. Um, if you should do something and you don't, it always happens. Like, oh, I bet you if I go this way home instead of my regular way home, I'll probably get pulled over for not having a rego. And sure enough, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's all you're going to get from me, Fano. I'm not happy. But, hey, shout out to all the Brisbane Broncos fans. We showed up in attendance. 40,190 people showed up to that game. So, true. Yeah, look. I mean, it started off good for you. So, you know, Jordan Ricky scored their first try, then the Roosters just went to another level. I know you hate them, but I, for some reason, don't mind them. I seem to be watching a lot of their games lately, and they've been doing good. Uh, Joey Manu doing Joey Manu things. He scored their first try for them, and I just think it was Angus Crichton, eh? Like, you just guys just could not tackle him. I think that first he set up the first try for Joey Manu because he had that that break on the was it the Roosters left your guys right side eh? because that that's what you were saying in the chat eh? like yeah. all their tries were coming down your guys right side which is was that Ricky's side yeah that's yeah right. that's where Ricky was. Yeah, and yeah, that's Angus the same thing that happened to us versus the Panthers. They just exposed our non-centered <coughs> second rows. Mm. Yeah, it was just a uh, one-way traffic and the Roosters. I think they just proved that they're still a good enough team to where if they have the role on you and they're dominant, they will put you to the sword. But I think this biggest storyline coming out of the game doesn't really have to do with the Roosters. Has to do with your boys, in particular Reynolds. Eh? Is he done? Done for the year? That's, nah, that's I think he'll make he a late comeback. comeback, but yeah, yeah, because uh, it's what six to eight weeks is it? Torn pick. Um, no, on, I think they're saying go months. Keep, keep, keep talking. I'll, I'll, I'll come in. Yeah, um, he's a devastating and loss. Look, it's a recent I'm... search because he's always injured. <laughs> I don't know how you replace that experience. Uh, it's going to place more responsibilities on the shoulders of Man and Walsh, which we know they can do it. They've got the ability to do it. Like Man and Walsh have a connection that you know, it's like nah, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like that few others have the way they can combine on players that make something out of nothing is ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. So um, we've got. Reynolds out for 12 to 14 weeks, a.k.a. three months. Um, Jesse's out for six weeks. Um, yeah, that's it. And they're both having surgery. Well, um, Jesse had surgery yesterday, no, two days ago. And Reynolds will be having surgery today or tomorrow. Yeah, like there might be a tough few... You know, this next month might be a little bit tough for the boys, but I think if he's come through unscathed or relatively unscathed, he'll still be there. I mean, I think as long as Paddy Kerrigan's holding down the forwards, you got Payne Haas's back, 
Uh, as long as you got the electrifying one at full back and man holding the six, your centers are good enough. Cobo, uh, Stags, and that winger that uh, we're absolutely in love with, old Dean. He is still, you know, <laughs> it wasn't his greatest performance, not gonna lie. He uh, kind of had the old, old butterfingers on Friday night and it cost him a few times. He pretty much botched like two tries. And then got Simbin, so not his best performance, but hey, he's still young, still learning. They're going to have those performances every now and again. But uh, yeah, Roosters, man, dominant victory in every sense of the word. Since Victor Connor Watson, hell of a game in replacing Victor Radley. They have kind of low-key looked good without Victor Radley. And did you see that, did you post me that thing about Willie Mason? Was it you that sent it to me? The one about um it was what was it? You know how you know how I say that uh what is it? That the Roosters halves do better without each other. Uh, cause they're more dominant when the other one's not there. So like Walker put that like Kerry was playing best when Walker wasn't there. Um and then Walker kind of do the same. But Willie Mason made a point that one thing that's changed about the halves this year is that everyone's trying to play the ball playing lock. So a lot of the time, the ball's going to the 13 first, which makes the half the second receiver. So they've got to stand wider out. And he was the one that pointed it out that Victor Raleigh, since he's been injured, it's going directly to um, Kiri or Walker from the start. So they don't have to stand a little bit out more. So it's them dictating. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're not waiting for it to come out to them out the back. You know, where it's going to Radley first, and then it goes to one of them, and then they play. It's going straight to them, and it's noticeable, man. It's really, really noticeable. They have been playing better without uh, Victor Radley there. I'm not saying that he's the issue, um, but maybe he just has to play a different style. We know he's a good ball playing lock, but... Uh, Maybe he just needs to run the ball more. I mean, obviously with Isaiah Yo, it's different. I feel as though he's a lot more selective when he passes and when he runs. He knows when to run, he knows when to pass. So it's kind of like the next step. But yeah, man, Roosters are trending in the right direction. It's been unlucky with you and your boys with all the injuries. But I think you guys got the depth. Your forward pack, the young bucks, I think are ready and rearing to go. Maybe we don't quite have the fitness level there yet, but that just comes with time. Comes with time. So even though, you know, it didn't quite go your way on Friday night, I'm not really worried about you boys. We'll still be there. I think all you have to do is get to the eight. No one's going to want to play you no matter where you are. Um, yeah, it's just a team you just want to avoid altogether. But, yeah, I think that's all I've got, really. I'm just not too sold on us getting to the grand final this year, I don't think. Like, I'm thinking realistically... Even if we get a full healthy team in time for the finals, our luck man and stats have said so far we'll have injuries, and <laughs> those injuries will cost us a big time game. So, uh, like if if we get there, we get there. But um, I'm not too sure. We're still a quality side. It's just yet yeah, we're we're in that unfortunate category this season, where just injuries have run amok through our team, and you know we're not the only team that is suffering injuries. But it just, yeah, it feels like, man, when it rains, it pours. And I, th- I guess we're, we're of the fortunate side where, you know, we've got a lot of quality players. So it just feels like every week we're losing a star player. Whereas sometimes like teams like Parramatta, they don't have too many star players. So when they lose one, it really hurts the squad. So, yeah, like I said, we've got, we got enough depth to try and carry us through. And I just read an article, Madden has a chance this week to be playing. Um, not quite confirmed, but there is a possibility that he could be playing this week. So uh, we're looking hopeful that he can. But, uh, yeah, we'll just hope for the best, I think. Heading over to Super Saturday, it is your Bulldogs taking on the West Tigers. What a game that was. I might as well let you kick things off. And, yes, I will kick things off. Look, you know, sometimes um, teams need the buy. You know, if things aren't going your way, the best thing that can happen to you is having that buy week, get things sorted and properly. But there are times where the buy can also be to your detriment. 
and that's kind of how I thought we were kind of on a roll and having that week off I thought we might lose it and coming up against old Vincent's Tigers I was a bit worried and it showed that first mm-hmm. half Tigers I think just wanted it more they were more hungry uh, they played footy they shifted the ball out of their own half and they scored which was a little bit concerning especially on that or was it our left there right and that was Benji Marshall's plan you know everyone knows that the Bulldogs attacking side is our left side and he came up with the game plan um, let's make them defend to fatigue them so that way it will damper their uh, attack and it worked because I thought we should have scored in that first five minutes. We had the ball on their line. Weren't good enough to score. We looked clunky. We looked like pretty much a team that had had the week off but like hadn't really honed in, if that makes sense. like They didn't seem like they were all there. They weren't clicking. And we paid the price. We went down at halftime 14 to 6, I believe. 6 or 8. Um... But I had full faith that the boys could turn it around. And honestly, the best thing that happened to us in that game was halftime. Because in that second half, we absolutely demolished them. It was crazy, bro. Like It felt like we were just on their line the whole time. And all they had was just bring the ball out of yardage pretty much every time. I don't even know if they had an attacking set in that second half. That's how dominant it felt. Um, I remember we scored, and then I think we got a penalty, took the two points, scored again. Then I th- I felt like we had another penalty, but we just had all the momentum. Our left side was absolutely devastating. Have to give it to our, f- pretty much to our whole team, man. They played really well. I was scared Connor Tracy wasn't there, which put Blake Taff back to fullback, but he was all good. He held his own. Reed feels really good in the middle, man. He's real solid for us, especially in defense. You know, he misses tackles here and again, and sometimes his tackles are ineffective, but he just sets the line and he sets the pace, uh, which is what our defense is really, really good at. Kakao doing Kakao things. Burden is really coming to the fore, man, honestly. I think... Oh, I don't think he's going to make New South Wales team, but to me, he's the perfect 18th man. He should be there, uh, and the stuff goes out here and cover multiple positions. And honestly, if he keeps up, keeps it up, I know Hines is probably the front runner for the six, but I wouldn't be surprised if he if he gets the nod, man. I really think he'll do a job at six, uh, for, if he, if he's needed, moving at centre. Um, but yeah, no, super proud of the boys to the West Tigers. Shame, pricks, uh, to Vincent. Yeah, what. I was actually thinking, bro, if we if, <laughs> if we lose, I'm not going to hear the end of this. Uh, and at half time, I actually <laughs> thought he would chirp up, eh? but he didn't. He must have known as well that they were going to lose it that second half. It's they looked at times they looked good, especially like when Galvin got the ball, they looked dangerous. But yeah, I thought Aiden Caesar had a good game until he do that stupid um, hip drop tackle that he didn't even get binned for which was bullshit, and now he's off for like four weeks with an early guilty plea. I'm like, what? Come on, bro. That's just that's just not it. And then West Tigers, I think it was just too much in their head, eh? Like, you know how when you have a couple calls go against you, it just snowballs? Well, it, it wasn't a snowball. It was an avalanche for them because they were just harassing the ref. Now, does she make the best cause? No, but I don't think it was that bad. But then I guess, you know, I'm always going to think that when the cause are going to my team and not the other way. But, um, yeah, look, they just keep going at her. She finally had enough, and David Clemmer, the old bulldog, got sent for 10. And then, oh, how do you say his name? Is it Alex Safer? He freaking tried to shoulder tackle... Um, was it Kiraz? One of our players. And then Kikau, like, barked up at him, grabbed him. And that's when I'll read my home. Is he the new grub? You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> I feel as though he's just doing his job, you know. <laughs> I mean, he's just going over there to protect the boys. And he gets a headbutt for his uh, 
Because I was like, he didn't even say anything. You know, Saif wants to grab him and fucking give him a headbutt, a couple of jabs, and that's why you get 10 minutes in the bin as well. But overall, um, good. Just glad we got the victory. I want to say it was our best game. I want to say it's our worst game. All the pages in the Bulldogs feed still want Drew Hutchinson's head, even though we're winning. Um, but they always like that. They're, they're ruthless, man. Like every other comment is uh, pretty much just going at Serato. Why do you keep picking Drew Hutchinson? Why do you keep picking, uh, what's his name, Salmon? Um, they want, who was it, Gerald Skelton, because he's been killing it in New South Wales Cup. They want him on wing. They want Sexton at seven. Uh, they want this and that. But uh, look, man, we've been doing the job, getting the victories done. Why don't, don't change what isn't broken is what I say. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got in that. Glad to get the two points. We'll move on. Boys heading in directions. Cheer it. Fuck you, Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so far, uh, the practice run uh, head-to-heads are going pretty good. Uh, I think Vince is 0-2 in the practice run head-to-heads. <laughs> they lost to the Broncos last week and the Bulldogs <coughs> this week. So, uh, Like I said, th- I think this is the theme of the season. When it rains, it pours, far no. When it rains, it pours. Now, this game, I will be honest, I only caught the last half of it because we were gearing up to catch up with all the cousins. We all had our uh, bit of a bit of a wrap-up of the week on the Saturday. So I, I only caught the end of this game. Uh, I thought, man, valiant effort from the Bulldogs. Uh, they're, they're just building. They're building really strongly this season, I think. Um, from, what was it? The first four rounds, they they put forth valiant efforts, um, but you know, come away unfortunate most of the time. So it's good to see them pulling off a few wins now, and you know, it, it just looks like the combinations are just starting to click. You've got you know players in positions that really thrive with one another. That Sherry Carreras combo is pretty deadly. Quite like that. Um, Addo Carr and Crichton. That, that's that's a cheat code that one in itself the crying nano car combo that that's a new south wales combination right there um yeah drew hutchinson he, he's just ugly i think that's why no one wants him there he's just an ugly looking cunt <laughs> he's not that handsome um my bad if the bro ever wants to come on the show is reed maoni the new girl probably i mean bulldogs are just full of them i feel like you guys aren't the bulldogs if you don't have um, a grub on your team, Kikau, amazing. Salmon, I'm selling him this week. He ain't done shit in a minute, man. He ain't done shit in a minute in fantasy. My boy, I picked the wrong one. I should have picked Curran. Um, yeah. The Tigers, are the Tigers, I think, it's, it's like a floundering year for them. They're just trying to find that identity under um, Benji. Galvin, man, he's been what, what do we call that? Like, um, he, he's been the diamond in the rough this season. He's been hell if he didn't get that hip drop and he played those two weeks, he probably would have been my uh, my six for the team at the trimester. Um, he's he's very much like Reese Walsh, makes an error, doesn't give a fuck. He'll he'll run that same play the next the next run, he'll do it again. Um, or he'll just keep trying until he scores off of it, or you know. Uh, has a try assist from that same motion or shape. Uh, uh, so, yeah, as long as the Tigers keep him and don't let him sign with the Roosters, your future's great. Your future's great. you got um, you're just a good young bloke ready to put in the mahi. And it looks like the team want to play for one another, whereas, you know, in previous years, they just looked like they didn't quite care some games. Like, obviously, players do care and they don't want to lose every game, but it just looked... Um, it looked a bit like what is it like the 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019 Warriors? Just they just <laughs> fill fill the competition really. So <laughs> I wasn't supposed to do them dirty like that. <laughs> Getting strays. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean maybe not 2019 that you guys had Delhi and Roger, but I mean shit, that's about it really. You just can't win premierships, but you can take home a Dallium. Let's go. 
But yeah, that, that's I think that's it from me, man. I, I I didn't see too much of that game, so I can't really give too many opinions on that one. Unless you have anything more to say, I'll move us on to game number two of Super Saturday. Nah, man, let's move on. Good. Moving on to Seabus Super Stadium on the Gold Coast. Man, what a game this was. This had us cousins on the edge of our seats. We were like, oh, no way. All right. Let's go. So, man, from the outset, you know, Titans scoring the first try, I was like, oh, here we go. Come on, Titans. The Warriors played you into form, hey? Let's go. But uh, to be fair, you know, Titans have been building momentum over the past four weeks. We've, we've seen it. Uh, we've noticed that change from the Cowboys when they scored the most points they had that season to then going into Golden Point with the Raiders to then a win on Anzac Day against the Warriors to now a slight loss. It, it was, you know, it was Carl or how far, no. That, that's just the way it is. You know, that's just how Melbourne are. They just keep their ugly little heads <laughs> in it until the final whistle blows, and that's how they come out with a win. But, yeah, final score, 20-22. to 22. I wouldn't have called it that tight, to be honest. I probably would have said Melbourne win this comfortably. I would have said maybe 10 to 16 points win for Melbourne. Um, pleasantly surprised by uh, the Titans winning here. Um, I don't know what it was. I, I, obviously, you know, the Storm scored uh, one try more than the Titans. But, yeah, Titans showed a lot of heart in this game, uh, especially trying to go for that two-pointer to tie the game and send it into overtime. It was it was kind of heartbreaking seeing that, you know, they, they struggled to quite get it into overtime because I was like, Come on, come on, boys. Let's let's uh let's put a dub on the storm. Um, because yeah, surprisingly, Melbourne didn't score in the second half. Um, they just had to spend all their energy defending against the Titans. So yeah, shout out to the Titans. Um, definitely a team that are going to work their way off the bottom of the table. Um, you know, early in the season we said Titans probably be wooden spoon to be between them and the Rabbitohs. Now it's between them and the Eels. Shit, it'd probably be between them and us at one point if things don't <laughs> turn around for us as well. So, yeah, nah, strong game. Um, quite a few injuries out of this game, eh? Um, yeah. So I did see, what's his name go down? Um, Pep's down, eh? Yeah, he is. He couldn't finish the game. And I think he's out for a couple of weeks yeah, as well. So, so it's, yeah, it's tough for him because you know he's 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 been unfortunate. He's in that category on his own. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He is the category. Um, you know, I, I would have had him down as comeback player of the year, but it looks like it's going to um, oh Sherry, far out. But yeah, again, watched bits and pieces of this game with the cuzzies. Didn't quite watch all of it because, you know, when, when you're drinking and you're playing caps and bottles, you get distracted easily. So, <laughs> um, yeah, what have you got, brother? For once, I sound like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, game of two halves, really, eh? It's what it feels like this whole week was bro like teams would go out to a big lead and then they'll get hunted down you know either the team would complete the comeback or fall a little bit short but uh i just want to talk about aj brimson he can't go back to anywhere else he has to be their fullback i know Jaden campbell will come back eventually he might just have to take that number 14 spot or learn a new position because aj brimson is too good to be playing center where he doesn't get the ball he needs to either be the full-time fullback or go to six and let uh, Kieran Foran be the seven. But um, he's too good to be a centre. No surprise to me that the two games or three games where they've looked really, really good is while he's been there. And he's just he just makes stuff happen. Like You can't really account for him. That, that's what it seems like he's always around the ball he supports well he runs hard he seems like he's hard to tackle just so much happens like good stuff happens for the Titans when he's at fullback so I feel they have to keep him there and when Jaden comes back he has to fit in 
as opposed to uh, Brimson having to fit in and get his where he can. But it's looking like there's Hasler's team of old. To be honest, bro, I think I've lost count of how many, how many times I said the Storm deserve to lose, but find a way to win. And this is another one. I think they had a dubious call, bro, go their way. And it, it always seems to happen. I'm of the theory that the Storm will be, obviously, in the playoffs and maybe they get to the final. I'm not too sure. But I feel as though they've just used up way too much luck. They win on a game that it matters the most mm-hmm. where it's elimination. Something will, will go against them. And then it's going to ruin the whole game. They'll probably end their season and be like, bro, like, that was the most stupidest call. And no one's going to have sympathy. It's like, well, bro, we can count on, like, five, six fingers how many games you should have lost a call went your way and then you guys ended up winning so we don't want to hear it when the one time it goes against you it just happens to be a knockout game uh, but yeah Titans are getting better <laughs> they're looking more and more like a Des Hesler team his imprints are finally starting to show through but Storm got it done yet again but they lose oh Pippin Huizen he's gone and I heard the other bro's gone as well Falongo is that his name the backup Fullback for the yeah, storm. Long. He's out as well, eh? Is that on your injury report thingy? Did he get injured too? I think so. Uh, let's check that because yeah, next week their team really could be cool. looking different. Might be Meany goes back to fullback, and to be honest, he's been quite leaky at our centre. I feel as though those centres see him, and their eyes light up. But it's the storm. You know, sometimes you don't deserve to win, but you still do. And sometimes, you know, you just got to find a way to get it done. And that's what they do. They just get it done. So can't really hate on them, especially when Jerome Hughes is doing his thing. But yes, um, I feel Titans are on the rise. And Storm are just doing Storm things. So that's pretty much it, bro. I just think Brimson should be the fullback full-time. He's too good not to be. Jaden Campbell can just play somewhere else. Yeah. If you can't hold on to both, then I'm holding on to Brimson. As good as Campbell is, I just think Brimson just transforms your team, personally. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I got for that game, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to have a look where the uh, where the injury news is. I could be wrong. Like I wasn't one hundred percent sure about it. Um, but I did think I thought I saw something. Oh, to be confirmed. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's one of those impending ones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look, tough. Tough loss for the Titans, but. They're showing a bit more life than those Rabbitohs, unfortunately. Uh, heading over now to Queensland County Country Bank Stadium. See, this stadium name is too long. It's too long. Just go Cowboys Stadium. Mm. Why does it have to be Queensland Country Bank Stadium? Why? We got Westpac. We got Eden Park. We got Go Media Stadium. It's pretty long. Not going to lie. Uh, we got Yarrows. We got. What is. Forsyth Bar, that's a bit long. Um, sort it out, Farno. Anyway, we've got the Cowboys who narrowly lost to the Dolphins. Um, I'm not going to lie, by this point, we were um, singing and <laughs> running amok. So, yeah, all I know is, is Bostock scored me zero points. Well, he scored like fucking 10 or something, but might as well be zero. <laughs> I heard Alvarillo had a great game. Uh, Isako had a great game. Um, oh, Isako had a mean game. Yeah. Scored a triple. And almost converted everything. Let's go. Oh, well, hey, let, that's who we're picking up in fantasy this week. <laughs> Isako. There we go. Um, yeah, I can't comment too much on this game. Uh, Cowboys, we oh, like. I thought Cowboys at home were pretty good, you know, pretty, 
pretty unstoppable. I would have had Cowboys beating the Dolphins. Um, however, I was proven wrong, and it looked like the efforts of Jim, Jermaine Isako has shown through. And you know what I'm liking this season from the Dolphins? It's, it's their second season in the comp, and already they're, they're showing a lot of life. They're showing a lot of mana to just keep putting up numbers. Like They've had key injuries. They've had Hammer's been out for how many weeks now? They haven't had Flegler for, well, I think, since round three or four. Um, Herbie's been out. They've had just as much injuries as we have to key players, except their players are out for much longer. They don't get that glimpse of hope of having your players return just to have them leave again. That's hard. <laughs> that sucked. Um, yeah. Oh, but you know what I'm loving, though, from the Dolphins is the emergence of Max Plath, man. Like, this dude is mm. a player. He is here, man. Um, he almost uh, was on the team of the week last week, I think it was, but obviously lost his spot to Patty Sue. Um, but there he is, Ruben Cotter. He, he really put the, um, well, tried to put the Cowboys on his back. A lot of his runs, man, he was getting players wrapping him up about, I don't know, on the 10. And that, that try he got when he carried like three players over the line with yeah. him, that was almost every play. Every time he got the ball, he was carrying three players at least 10 metres, five to 10 metres every time. He was trying to win them this game, man. So big effort. But no cigar. Um, loving that Griffin Niamh is still starting. He's doing bits. Um, and, yeah, I was about to say, um, Helium was supposed to be back this week, eh? And, yeah, he was on the interchange. Um, so, yeah, nah, look. I'm not too sure what to make of the Cowboys. I know the Dolphins were saying, are they pretenders or are they contenders? I think they're in the middle of the park. Mm. They failed to beat us. And I haven't seen them beat another big team yet. Like ha- they haven't played the Storm or the Panthers yet, have they? I don't. Well, they think haven't. So. They lost. I'm not sure. I yeah. don't think so. So, yeah. So I'm not. I'm not sold on them. Um, just yet. But I'm happy for them. Happy for those Brisbane Dolphins. I mean, Redcliffe Dolphins or whatever the hell they want to be. The wannabe Broncos. Um, it looks like they're, they're, they're following in our footsteps so hard they uh, get as many injuries as us. <laughs> but over to you, brother, for your breakdown. Yeah, this game kind of followed a similar theme to the others where one team kind of jumped out to a lead and then they got chased down. Because um, the Cowboys look dominant in like their first 10 minutes like utterly dominant score those first two tries early and look like they were well on their way but uh kudos to the Dolphins man they came back Jermaine Asako got a hat trick what I wanted to say is bro did you see the bro TC News haircut well not haircut like his hair because <laughs> nah. I just thought he had short hair like I me. saw Kofusis oh yeah that's yeah, let's actually talk about that. <laughs> that ain't it. Just shave the whole thing off. Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know what you have to do. They look that like ain't the, it, Koro. They look like the upside down fade, bro. Like, what the hell? You know, where you start from the back and let it finish at the... Well, start at the front, I mean. I can fade it to the back. That Yeah, just let it go, <laughs> bro. You know, like, sometimes you just have to let it go. You know, but yeah. Tessie knew had, like, curly hair. Like long ish, it threw me off, and he looked like way bigger than what I thought he normally is. Like he's always been on the chunky side. Well, not I shouldn't say chunky, but like you know, like more stocky built, you know, outside backs, you know, centre winger, and now he just looks even more beefier, Thick. more stockier. Yeah, yeah, that's the word I think I'm looking for. Uh but look, Dolphins get it done. You know how I feel about Queensland versus Queensland games. Not my fave. I think this was just on in the background. <laughs> I think I was just drifting off to sleep. But it uh, was very, very interesting. Both teams had their chances. Dolphins took it the most. Jermaine Asako. Who do you have as the best goal kicker in the game? Because to me, he's up there. 
he's been one of the best kickers for years. I remember when he was with you guys. Like, you know, te- teams that he's on, they tend to go up. Like, when they score a try, it tends to be the full six points. You know, like, they, they're going up in sixes, not in fours, because he's just so confident with his kicking. Yeah. Yeah, so we, who do you have as the best kicker in the comp? Just goal kicking. Oh. Can't go past the healthy Reynolds. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> a enough. healthy Reynolds. Yep. When he's healthy, when he's playing, he can make those kicks. But yeah, Jermaine Sarko, yeah, I'd, I'd say he's up there. He's got to be up there. To me, what, he's... Can I throw this in the mix as well? Uh, real quick, is, is... How long does he have left on that contract? Because he seems to be another son of Bennett. You know, much like Darius Boyd and just follow Bennett around. Do you think he has the chance to uh, head down to South? <coughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure if Bennett said, hey, I'm going, you coming with, he's probably going. Um, that's just the way I see it. But yeah. he's, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say so. If pretty much if Bennett says... He'll follow him. All right. I'm, I'm just trying to look it up. What's their bloody team name again? Uh, oh, there, yeah, Dolphins. She was at the bottom. Because you know how we were talking about um, Cody Nakurima has been playing really well this year. There's this thing in um yeah. I feel as though it's more prevalent in basketball, and probably just because I watch it more know a little bit more about it um players that we always pick in fantasy things we look out for people who are in contract years because they just go for numbers in their oh. contract year they do not care whether they win <laughs> or lose if it's a contract year you know you're putting the ball up you're trying your hardest because you're playing for you know for their next contract and i'm just wondering if that's i feel as though i don't see it as much in nrl or it's just harder to see but it can't be a coincidence that Cody Nukurima is playing career best form when he's in need of a new contract, you know. That's all I'm saying. I might just leave it at that. But I feel as though that might be playing into how well he's doing. So who am I looking for again? Uh Asako. Oh no, nah, he's there Isako. till twenty twenty six. So he's still got two more years after this year. Um, ah. Well, yeah. then could we see him make his debut at the Warriors? You know, he's he's from Christchurch. Surely yeah, he comes oh, home. He is, eh? Comes home to all. <coughs> I mean, potentially. I mean, not but... that he's in a contract year, but I just like to like because they need they need a winger or two. <laughs> Well, are we not on the dun, dun, dun. bandwagon anymore? Or is it the other winger? Who was the other winger? Montoya, eh? Montoya. Yeah, yeah. it is, because he's dead to me. Look, I'll right. get into that. I'll get into yeah. that with you when, once we get to okay. to uh, Sunday night's games. When yeah. you wrap up this one, I'm, yeah. I'm going to let you guys know how I'm feeling as a, as a bandwagoner. <laughs> well, let's wrap it up then, eh? Well done to the Dolphins. Good on you to get the win. <laughs> Cowboys, I can sort your shit out. Dolphins, though, you know, they've been in their top eight, and with these wins, they're solidifying their spot. Like I keep saying, games that you're expected to win, you need to win. Solidify your spot. Cowboys mm-hmm. didn't do that, and they're normally good at home, like you mentioned. Dolphins are like, nah, it does get. Got the job done. They're now solidified in their top eight. And Cowboys, uh, same points as us on 10, but they're outside. Because they we have the better differential shame, but yeah, we'll leave it at that. Let's move hey, on to dolphins, the next one. Dolphins trying to be the big, the bigger little bros. Because you know <laughs> we we the kings of Queensland, we mm. the kings of Queensland. So we need we need the we need the princes to step up, and is it the dolphins that uh, are <coughs> going to step up? But anyway, I digress. Sunday afternoon, over at a rainy. McDonald Jones Stadium in Newcastle. The Newcastle Knights hosted the New Zealand Warriors and thrashed them. Well, they didn't thrash them, but they beat them comfortably, 14-8. to eight. Now, Warriors fans, is it time we hit the panic button? 
Um, outside Dylan Walker's try, you look lacklustre. You have zero kick chase. You can't play in the wet. That's one thing I've noticed is you struggle in the rain. It was Manly in the rain at home, struggled. Uh, Knights in the rain, struggled. I don't know what it is. Well, I kind of do. Um, first, <laughs> kick chase. Do you know how to do it? I know you do. You've been training that since juniors. When the kick goes up, you chase that. Uh, if you need any inspiration, look up uh, Viliami Kakao highlights. Look up some Zach Lomax this season. Um, who else? Uh, I'm pretty sure Dane Gago and Bradman Best showed you guys how to do it in this game. Um, who else does it really well? Reese Walsh and Salwin Cobo um, off some Adam Reynolds. In case you won't see too much of it this year, but if you roll back last year's highlights, you'll see heaps of that. Um, who else? Oh, Panthers. Panthers have some of the best kick chase. You have Sean Johnson, who can put up some bombs, man. Now you just need to run your ass down there and make some tackles. Um, get in and, in, like, well, not interfere, but, you know, contest the kicks. Match the fullback. When they're going up for the ball, you've got fucking Roger Tui Vasashek, who I don't know if he knows he's allowed to roam or if he's not allowed to roam. Coach, what doing, brother? You've got a Delhi medalist at the fullback position playing centre because, you know, for the for the betterment of the team and Chance is an amazing fullback. I'm not taking that away from him. But Roger, either he's allowed to roam and he plays first or second receiver on fourth tackle to take Sean Johnson out of that play. So Sean is ready for fifth because what I've noticed over the past couple of weeks is a lot of the forwards are overrunning their line and Sean Johnson's getting stranded and has to surrender or just force a pass. That leaves you... Uh, with Tamari Martin on fifth tackle, and he's putting up the kicks. No offense, tr- um, Tamari Martin. I was rooting for you at the start of the season, um, <laughs> but you know Sean Johnson when it comes to putting up those kicks, my man. So, Fano, here's my proposition. We need Rog coming in on that fourth. I think there's um, an injury cloud over Roger at the moment as well. He, he may or may not. I just read a small article to the side there. Um, he may or may not be playing this week. Or the other option with Roger is to, like I've seen um, other people say, that he has had his best game on the wing. So Montoya out, Roger to the wing, and that brings back Adam Pompey uh, into the centres. My favourite Bronco, I mean Warriors player from last season. Um, I look, I think he's got a lot to prove this season. Um, he will be knowing that any time he gets an opportunity to play in the first grade team, he will go out there and do the best job he can do. Um, and Roger will be solid out there on the wing. Um, he's confident. He knows how to catch the higher ball. He knows how to, you know, attack the kicks. The other wing needs to be addressed as well. Um, Dylan can't tackle Zalesniak. Um, what are you up to, my brother? Yes, your strike rate is amazing. Um, you know, is that all mm. the Warriors are paying him for is to score tries? Because I think on average per week, he lets in at least one try, at least one, sometimes three, because um, he just reaches his arms out and they run through it, or he tries to go for the intercept play and he misses it, and now uh, Rocco's trying to cover that ground to make those tackles. Uh, he leaves Rocco on an island. He reminds me a lot of um, Salwan Cobo last season. Salwan did that almost every bloody play. He will just rush up off the edge to try and make that tackle. Um and then Stags would have to cut back or Herbie would have to cut back and make those covering tackles. Um, sorry, Tamara Martin. I'm saying you're out because Chanel Harris defeated your in, brother. <laughs> you're in. Um, sorry, Tamara Martin. I loved you in the Māori All-Stars. You played look at them, but uh, Chanel Harris defeated. It is your turn to show us what you got. Things need to change. You're not winning games. You haven't won the past three games, I think it was. I think your last win was against, I don't know, who was it? Someone. Raiders, maybe, um, at home. And then since then, you've been losing. Uh, must suck. You remind me of the Warriors of yesteryear. Uh, every year. What am I kidding? Um, Mitchy Barney, Adam Fanua, Blake, Wade, Egan. You guys are safe, solid. You guys are doing amazing things. Adam Fanua, Blake, just keep doing what you do, brother. I think Kate Will went down with an injury. Um, so not too sure if he'll be there, which should promote 
Mm. So Pompey was on the interchange. So he put him in the starting lineup, put Laban back on to the bench. I don't know about Dylan Walker, man. Not sold on him. Bring back Zion. Zion Mau. Mau. Remember him from a couple of weeks ago? He mm-hmm. was devastating mm-hmm. through the middle. Bring him back. Um, he'll give you some life off the bench. You can take out either Tomali or Bunty out for. You can get rid of Dylan Walker. Um, put Laban back in. Yeah, maybe put um, Montoya on the bench, starting Pompey. Um, and that way Montoya can come on for Dallin if need be. But yeah. Anyway, that's enough about the Warriors and their woes. I quite enjoyed watching these uh, Knights build some momentum the past couple of weeks. This is two two games back to back down there. One, eh? they they won last week against who was it? The who did they beat? I thought it was, it was another raining played? game. Um, yeah, it was a Dragons? Sunday. They beat the Dolphins last week. That's right. Nah, Dolphins. Oh uh, yeah. And we were, yeah, another game where the Dolphins should have won instead of losing. Um, <clears throat> like I was saying to one of the cousins the other day, I think the Knights are more conf- well, not confident, but I think they're more comfortable playing without Ponga because they're not trying to force him into action. They're able to sort of let the game come to them. They can follow a game plan and they can stick to that. They get their centres involved a little bit more. Um, Paul Pierce, hell of a season. I didn't know he's from the UK. Um, the commentators <laughs> say it. Yeah, I'm like, true, makes sense. I've never heard anyone call their kid Paul Pierce. Um, so yeah, nah, awesome man. He's a wicked player. Um, I was thinking about picking him up in fantasy, but yeah, nah, didn't in the end. Um, yeah, loving Bradman best. He's having a great season this year. Dang gay guy, how old is he? He's at least sixty, right? He's ancient. Like yeah. he's old. He's, definitely he's old. old. I feel like he's been playing since I've been like. Oh, I feel like I was still in school when he was playing. Probably was. That's why. You know, like dang gay guy, man. Anyway, that was up in Brisbane. Um, yeah, it feels like Father Time has not quite collected his dues with um, dang gay guy. So yeah. No, it was it was a good game. I thought, you know, considering the conditions, the errors and the penalties um, from the Warriors is just that's too much. How you how how do you expect to win when you can't overcome those odds? Like the penalties, the errors, the set restarts, all of that. It just puts you under more pressure to perform, and these score lines happen. The Warriors had such an expectation this season, and. Yes, I think it's unfair because I think last year they just took a lot of teams by surprise, whereas this year a lot of teams are going, all right, we're, we're penciling the Warriors, we're circling them on the calendar. Um, this is a team that we want to beat this season. Um, and I think a lot of teams are showing up to play against this team. Um, but yeah, look, I think there are some changes that need to be made within the Warriors lineup to try and see what combinations are going to work to help them win games. Uh, that's me for this one. Yeah, just going off the back of what you are saying, man. Got to give props to the Knights, say. Eh? Two weeks now without Ponga, and they're getting two victories, which no, no, no one expected them to get. They've been grind, grinding wins, I feel as though. You know, like, they've been grinding it out. And I think with the case of Ponga, it's one of those things where he's so good, and he makes everything happen that... Like, the team has to be built around him. Like, it's kind of... Like, obviously, you want him with the ball every time, and he makes something out of nothing almost every time. When he's healthy, they look like a playoff team. But I think with him not being there and being out for a while, it forces everyone else to step up their game. Like, Hastings has moments where he looks like an elite number seven. Like, his ability to control a team... And lead them around the park is really, really good. He just doesn't do it consistently. I feel as though when he's the chief playmaker and he's the one calling the shots, he plays better. But again, it's that case of he might want to be Batman, but is he truly good enough to be Batman? On the old game, yeah, sure. But consistency, and I think consistency shows us that he's not. 
Um, you mentioned it, man. Dan Gagai. He's just proof that class is permanent. You know, he's been yeah. good since way back in. It's not like there's not a big difference between his worst game and his best games. He's just Mr. Consistent. Feels mm. though he's just got a good game in him every time. And I'm not surprised the Roosters are looking at him. You know, there were rumbles that the Roosters were looking to sign Gagai for next year. And of the form he's going off this year's anything to go by, he's still got some good rugby in him, you know, and you kind of need those old heads in your team. So, yeah, but he's been really, really good for them. Well, I feel anyway. And Hastings with Ponga there calls the shots more, leads the team around a little bit better. And yeah, I feel as though they just have to do it as a collective, as opposed to an individual. And I think that's what's coming through with Ponga not being there. But to the Waz, it really is giving Soria's vibes, man. It really is. Um, <laughs> I'm still backing them to make it. I just yeah, don't see how yeah. they're like their team's just too good. What happened to um Marata Niokore? Is he injured? Because I feel as though I just haven't heard his name in a long time he came back for a little bit and like i think he played a couple of games maybe one or two because um, he may be injured you know we're talking about shifting roger to the wing how come we can't shift him to center i mean i you know talking about marata neokore here you know have roger go wing neokore the center you keep the second rowers where they are where they're at he's done it before i mean he played center for the kiwis you know for a number of times um, I think that might be a move. You know, it's cook up. Remember at the start of uh, the season, we were talking about be careful what you wish for because you might just get it and you might not like how it looks. <laughs> I mean, I know, you, you know, we didn't, we weren't really fans of Luke Metcalf, but I'll tell you what, they were winning when he was in the team. You know, he didn't pass the ball to Roger <laughs> and we gave him grief, but boy, you know, they were getting shit done. And now that he's not there, not saying that you know, he makes all the difference, but it's just weird how, you know, something where you ask for it enough times and you finally get it, it just doesn't look how you figured it would look. And, yeah, they do need to switch it up. I would say give um, old Chanel a go. Why not? But I thought they... Like, isn't Sean Johnson still a little bit injured and there was talks about him needing to have rest? Like, when are they going to give him his rest? Because if they keep this up, I feel as though the more they lose, the less chance he gets to rest because he has to play, you know? And yeah. if he's pushing the envelope, something bad might be might happen and that might be it. I mean, he could be one injury away from retirement. You know, he's at towards the end of his career. But, yeah, the Waz, I don't know, they're confusing, man. I feel as though their last three weeks... Has just been self inflicted wounds, giving it up multiple penalties when they're giving up their was it those reset sets, you know, it, it, it's just all at the wrong time. It seems that like every penalty they give away is just at the wrong time, and they end up on the back foot. Yeah. And yeah, Dallin, you know, I don't know with him and his decision making, eh. Not that it matters to me. He's been dead to me for years anyway. <laughs> Could care less about him, to be honest. Yeah. And it's the same with uh, Montoya. He's also dead to me for a number of years. Um, Just mistakes I will never forgive them for when they were Bulldogs and I refuse to let it go. I'm not letting it go. Simple as that. We also need to be kind, man. One day we want to get these boys on the show and they'll be like, when you said this about me, the poor <coughs> kids. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know, it's look, I just that's just how I feel. You know, not saying that I wouldn't shake his hand if he yeah. was there, but you know, I'd be like, hey man, you know, you you hurt me. You hurt me when you played that ball the wrong way. Okay, and it haunts me to this day. <laughs> <laughs> he had to go. They both did, you know. Sometimes when you're at a club you just you just have to go at your time and sometimes the grass really is green on our times, other times it isn't. But um, yeah, yeah. I don't and really have just to just... double double down on the injuries. Um, yep. Harris Savita's out for four weeks. 
oh, well, four weeks since he left. So he's he's had a calf injury. I'm not too sure if this is updated. Like this is um, 30th of April. So it says four weeks. So I think it's four weeks from that date. I'm not too sure. So he's out for four weeks. Uh, Fred Lussick's out till round 10. He was suspended. Metcalf yeah. is leg injury. He's out till late season. Neil Kore's foot, he's out till mid-season. Um, and Tavanga's out for four to six weeks. But to be fair, they don't really miss Jazz at all. Wow. So they got their own issues, eh? Well, that's going to be tough. I just don't know where they go from here, right? Like, you should have been in the Dragons, or as far as I'm concerned. If you wanted to be a premiership contender, you had to win the game against the Dragons. You lost it. You didn't just get lost. You got fucking smoked. Titans, you had to win that game, a bounce-back game. And the same shit. You know, both those games, first 10 minutes, dangerous. Looking good. Looking like it's going to be an easy victory. And then that last 70, I don't know what, what happened. And then you come up against a Knights team who, without their best player, and got a scrappy win the week before, and then you come up with that. It's just, mm. it's hard to find positives in the Warriors' last three weeks. And I, <coughs> I don't know where they go from here. Obviously, changes need to be hip, need to happen. Hopefully they figure it out because I still want to see them play in the playoffs because if they're winning, it's it's good for, you know, it's it's good for Otero, right? Everyone's all on the bandwagon. Mm-hmm. And I just feel as though they've got, they had a lot of momentum going into this year. All their games are still sold out, which is great when they play here. You know, it's hard to get Warriors tickets. I just want to see that keep up. and But in order for that to happen, man, they have to win. Because if they, if they go back on their trajectory, yeah. if they go back to the old days, you know, I think it's going to be a little bit easier to come by. Everyone's going to be, they're going to stop saying up the waz. You know, it's going to be no more cheeseburgers. But da You know, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but look, that's all I got, man. No, Knights got it done. Got it done the hard way, but they got it done. Their fullback looks good. Jackson Hastings taking charge is what they need. And to the Waz, I just don't know where they go. It's not looking good. It's not looking good at all. Not one bit. But anyway, we digress. Moving along now, Parramatta Eels had the bye this week. So <laughs> they get an automatic win. And... The Sharks take on the Dragons at Points Bet Stadium in Sydney. Uh, another wet, slippery evening. Um, and the Sharks, I wouldn't say like it was a comfortable win. There, were, there was moments there where the Dragons looked like they were coming back. And then, you know, in Sharks form, they just find ways to swing the momentum back their way you know like a real shark in the ocean once they smell blood in the water they they go for the throat they didn't quite put the shellacking on like they have the few <laughs> past few weeks like they did against the the cowboys and the and the raiders it was it was a much closer game this week um no try scored by uh our boy ronaldo mulitalo this week i think he's on a dry spell now it is two weeks without a try um, or did he get one last week, but not the double? I'm not too sure. But anyway, uh, yeah, I thought it was a good bit of a back and forth game. It looked like the Dragons had that momentum at the end of the first, and then the Dragons came out pretty much straight away and um, scored a try straight out the second half, and then, yeah. They maintained that momentum for the rest of the game. They didn't put on, you know, it wasn't a try try fest like we we're accustomed to from the sharks. So again, I'm confused. Are the sharks really that good, or are they just playing rubbish teams that make them look better than what they are? I'm unsure, but uh, I think the sharks have a decent team this week that they'll be playing. Um, who the fuck are they playing this week? Yep, they sure uh, do. It's sorry, probably be the game of the round, I'd say. The Storm. The Storm. Well, see, the thing about that game is, though, the Storm played down a level. They play at the same level of the competition. But they just managed to hang on. 
I haven't quite seen the Storm really dominate a team this season. I haven't. I've just seen them hang on and steal it at the end. So I'm not too sure. Maybe the Sharks could get that one. Maybe the Sharks could get that one. Probably not, though. I, I, I see the Storm just stealing it at the end again. But, yeah, look, um, I'm liking what I'm seeing from the Sharks. The, the Dragons showed a bit of life. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't quite seal the deal. Um, Ravalawa, loving what he's up to. He bags a double for the Dragons. He puts on the, the dances. Um, but, yeah, not quite what the Dragons wanted. Um, but yeah, it's a long season, long way to go. I think the Dragons can still bounce back. There's still plenty of life left in them. Uh, and as for the Sharks, the real test starts now because I think they have a, like a five or six game stretch, hey, where they're playing, you know, Storm, yep. Panthers, yep. Um, Roosters, Broncos. So I mean, I don't know if we're that threatening anymore. Um, it's a lot harder for us to win games without uh, Reynolds. But yeah, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Didn't watch this game. Um, can't remember <laughs> what I was doing, actually. I think I was recovering. Not from hangover, but we had a sh- tough gym session early Sunday, and the body was kind of hurting from it. But Dragon Sharks have went, I don't know, kind of how I expected. I thought the Sharks would pull out the victory. It looks like they got that done. Uh, I was Pretty good for old Shane Flanagan. It would have been cool to see the Dragons get up for this game and get the dub against his old team. But um, looks like it just kind of seemed like a collective effort, eh? The Sharks did their thing, got the job done. Nothing really more to say um, with you. We still don't know where the Sharks are, but yeah, they've got a tough stretch. So next week, as you mentioned before, they have the Storm. Following week after that, they have the Roosters. And then the week after that, they have Penrith. So these next three games, are going to see where they're at. I think the following week, they didn't have the Eels. But I don't know if Mitchell Moses will be back. And uh, I don't even know about the Eels anymore. So, and then where do they go to after that? Oh, yeah, then they got to choose the um, Broncos. Yeah. After the Eels. So... Yeah, these next four weeks, four or five weeks, we're going to figure out just where the Sharks are and whether they are a quality team. You know, I'd say they are in that slightly um, above average bracket. We just will figure out whether they are there or they are true premiership contenders. And when you got a superstar, the likes of Nico Hines, that just seems to dominate most games, you have a chance... Ronaldo Mulitalo is on a tear. I like that Hazelton guy. I'm, I have to admit I'm a big fan. <laughs> big fan of him. I like the way he plays. To me, he just runs oh, hard. 40-20. Straight, runs hard. Yeah, like it's just... Mm. I think the good thing about the Sharks is that they I have an identity. Well-rounded, eh? yeah. they well-rounded, yeah. eh? Yeah. They're quite well-rounded from the forwards to the backs. And I think Edel, um, Kale Edel, he's definitely... <coughs> um, going to be staying in that center spot and I think Telekai off the bench right, that's deadly off the bench you know yeah definitely you look across yeah their T1 through 17 uh, I wouldn't you wouldn't say that like if you go through their team and compare them to one else that they have players that are the best at their position maybe you'll have some that could contend for it like a Nico Hines you know um, like a Mulitalo for best swinger and stuff like that but you'll be hard pressed to find like five or six players that are better than them at their position. And I think that's what makes it deadly. They just have class all across the park. And people that aren't the best at their position, maybe not even elite, but they are certainly above average and on the you no know, closer to the elite scale than they are to the trash scale. And that's what makes them dangerous, man. And they had Fitzgibbon now for what the last was his third year there. They have an identity. They know how they want to play, uh, and they just execute. They play high yeah. IQ footy. They play to their strengths and they bully teams that they know they should. And yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. Dragons. They seem to have come back down to earth. I don't know. I haven't really heard much about Low Max um, the last few weeks. 
but I feel as though they've been going through some injuries of their own, and yeah, look, maybe it's reality's caught up to them, you know, they had a pretty hot start, the Dragons, caught a few teams by surprise, but as the season wears on, I think class comes through in the end, and maybe it's starting to show, but even still then, I think they'll be happy with where they are for the first nine weeks. But yeah, yeah. No, that's really, I don't really have much. Just Sharks getting the job done like they should. Hard luck, Dragons. On to the next one. Yeah, bro, that's me. Yeah. And look, I, I, I'd have to say, you know, if this form continues throughout the league, too early to, too early to tell, uh, I'd go Panthers versus Sharks um, in your grand final. If, you know, the league continues to play out the way it is currently. I feel like those would be your top two teams that you'd see at the end of the point, at the pointy end of the season. <clears throat> All right. Now routing out the evening, we've got our power ranking presented by 99 Dreams because that's the only people that sponsor us. Let's be honest, none of none of what I've said today from all these other brands actually sponsor us. No one's sponsoring this video. If you want to sponsor us, just do it. <laughs> Get it? Like Nike? Just, just do it. Um, anyway, I digress. Shout out to 99 Dreams for their power ranking this week. Um, powering us to perform power rankings for our own opinions, I guess. Uh, shall I go bottom to top um, and talk about movers and shakers? Yeah. So no changes for the last, for the last what? Four weeks, five weeks. South Sydney Rabbitohs are still at the bottom of the power ranking. Uh, because they had the buy, they couldn't go up or down, but we have the Parramatta Eels in at 16th. Uh, down one place from last week, and they've been slowly dropping um, each week, actually. I've noticed since they reached that high of 11th place on the power ranking, they've been steadily dropping. It's the West Tigers in at 15th. Uh, another team on the decline, it is St. George Illawarra Dragons uh, at 14th. At 13th, the biggest drop of the week, the New Zealand Warriors. We've, we've put them at 13th. They're on back-to-back -back losses against teams they should be beating. Uh, as well as that, they are... Oh, no, that, that's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back losses, right? Yep. Dragons, Titans and the Knights now. So that, that's three losses on the trot plus the draw, which, let's be honest, they were fortunate that... Um, it was, was it Josh or was it Olakwatu that run into the league of Sean Johnson that got them the penalty Josh. in front? Was Josh. Yeah, see? So that's the only reason the Warriors got the draw. Otherwise, it would be four on the on the trot. Anyway, so they're down at 13th. At 12th, dropping down, uh, actually moving up, sorry, uh, from last week is the Canberra Raiders. I just put it in the wrong colour. Uh, up from 12th, up one spot is the Newcastle Knights in 11th. Uh, up three spots is the Gold Coast Titans in 10th. Now, they moved up spots because of their two-point loss to Melbourne. So Melbourne Storm have been the number one team in our power ranking for the past, I don't know, maybe five, six weeks. So for you to only lose by two points, you've you got to be able to move up the ladder. You, you didn't lose too terribly, and it wasn't against a bottom-feeding team. So we've got the Gold Coast Titans moving up uh, a couple of spots into 10th. Cowboys dropped um, from – no, Cowboys moved up, sorry, from 10th to 9th uh, this week. Broncos dropped from eighth, uh, from 3rd to 8th. We had a big fall from Grace this week, just a lot of injuries, and, you know, we should have won that game uh, if we kept ourselves in it early on. Maybe the injuries didn't come. Uh, Manly Seagulls dropping down two spaces after their loss to the Raiders. Uh, moving up two spots this week, we've got the Cattery Bankstown Bulldogs. This is the highest they've been this season. Um, so congratulations to your team, Ulf. Well done. Uh, Redcliffe Dolphins in there at fifth. Uh, at fourth, we've got the Sydney Roosters at third. Because they only beat the Titans by two points, we've got Melbourne Storm dropping from first place. Up in second, we've got Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. And at number one, the Penrith Panthers. That is our power ranking for round nine. Hopefully you've been following along all season and you can keep track of all your team's progress so far. Um, 
Melbourne Storm and the Penrith Panthers have been the most consistent teams, but the Sharks have been one team that's been steadily climbing. Um, but like we said, they, they stayed around the middle for as long as they did because we weren't quite sure if they're there or thereabouts, and we're about to find out whether or not they keep going up yeah. or they plummet down. But that's all from the power ranking. And uh, I just want to say thank you all so much for listening in today. It's been a, a great episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as we have. Um, that's it for us today. We will be back for a Thursday episode. We're back to our regular, regularly scheduled programming. So without further ado, I want to hand it over to Two. He can wrap it up for the rest of the show. Sure. Yeah, as always, we want to send a big shout out to those that have been following us for a little bit now. We are a trimester of the season in, and you know we are growing, and I hope you are growing with us. But I might just keep this one nice and simple. We've been going for a little bit now. Look forward to seeing everyone on Thursday. Now that we're back to our regular schedule, we will be going over the teams and giving our predictions. We're putting down our TA bet bet again. Um, But until then, we'll see everyone on Thursday. Everyone stay safe. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, I'll see you when I see you. Cheer to the cheer. Mā